You're listening to KSGF Mornings with Nick Reed on 1041 KSGF, Springfield's News Talk FM. It is 838. I am Nick Reed, and in studio with us, Colonel Lee Ellis, and we've actually spoken over the phone. We did uh, a talk with you. Well, I guess whenever it was, you were at College of the Ozarks last. Last August. Last August mm-hmm. it was. Boy, time goes by, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. How did that go, incidentally? Oh, really well. The students there are so positive, patriotic, and uh, interested, so it was very encouraging to me, and I think uh, encouraging to them. Yeah, I uh, like going to a place like that, and, and uh, you know, they've got that nice restaurant in there with all mm-hmm. the, the students at work, and uh, so often, depending on what pocket of our society you're in, you start to think, I mean, we are in so much trouble in this country. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the things that the young people and, and even people my age are focused or not focused on, and then you get around young people like that, and you think, well, they're, they're there. They're out here. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, and I think having the opportunity to uh, and the peer group that's doing things that are positive, that's working, a, Learning about life, really. I think that's the big oh, thing, yeah. just learning about life. And, you know, when I speak uh, about my experience as a POW, you know, there are leadership lessons, but they're really life lessons. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, and some of this, again, we've talked about in the past, but it's great refresher. You think, well, what could a young person who's going to go out into the world today, what, what lessons can they learn from somebody who – who had the the life experiences you did as a prisoner of war? Well, I think one of the most important ones, and one that I speak about down at the college, it's really having the courage to do the right thing. Uh, Doing the right thing is not easy. Life is not easy. It's hard. And every day as a person, as a husband, father, brother, businessman, uh, I have to make decisions that reflect on my character. And uh, some of those are hard decisions. So what I say is take the courage challenge. Lean into the pain of your fear to do what you know is right. Because if you don't, fear will take you out. You know, I've got in my hands your book, Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton, uh, Lee Ellis, and I know, of course, you, or I'm sorry, forward by Senator John McCain. And, uh, and some of what you just said, of course, is in this book. Um, but one of the things I know around this time of the year that, that you talk about, and I'm sure people are interested in, is, you know, five years, that's five Christmases. Um, what is it that somebody who, like you as a prisoner of war uh, at Christmas, I mean, what do you, is it even acknowledged? Uh, do you, did you celebrate it in some way? Well, we did celebrate it uh, in our hearts, and, and I was fortunate enough to have a couple cellmates, so we celebrated it together. Uh, we would tell stories about, you know, what were some of the traditions in our home yeah. growing up at, at Christmas time. Uh, it's a real time for reflection. You know, there wasn't any tinsel and mm-hmm. uh, all the trappings of Christmas, so it was a really time to reflect on the spiritual aspects of Christmas. That was very important. And also, I think, just uh, being so thankful for the freedoms that we have and thinking about being home and having the freedom to be with family again, that, that was really what it was about. You know, I suppose, I don't know if this is the case or not, but, but one could argue that that circumstance sort of lends itself to a, a more genuine reflection as to the meaning of Christmas as opposed to people who uh, aren't necessarily in that situation but are living life just fine and all the flashing mm-hmm. and the gifts and the buying, you know, presents and, and the rushing around and, and how easy it is with all of that going on to lose sight of it. Yeah, that's very true. And I've not completely made the adjustment back to uh, the, the Christmas that most people enjoy. It's a little bit of a, a frustration for me that so much emphasis is on that, that uh, we kind of lose the uh, religious and spiritual reflection time for that yeah now you we mentioned of course when you've been down here at college of the ozark speaking and, and you've got a certain message for young people but you do a lot of speaking um to nonprofits, fortune 500 companies mm-hmm. i mean a full range mm-hmm. theme wise is it is it pretty much the same do you find people are people i mean they may be in different yeah. phases in their life but but what it <clears throat> is that lends a person to be successful 
uh, as a student is the same thing as a person who is CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Absolutely. You know, no matter who you are, you're going to have to make difficult choices. Whether you're a student and there's peer pressure from the wrong direction or you're the CEO of the company, you have to make difficult choices. Uh, you have to have character. You have to have teamwork. And teamwork was very important for us in the POW camp. We were we would risk our lives to reach out to do something to protect or to support a teammate who had been tortured or was living alone in solitary confinement. Well, we really need that kind of teamwork today, uh, whether it's young people or adults or CEOs. CEOs, I'm in a group of, called CEO Netweavers, and it's a group of CEOs and CEO partners that meet once a month and then sometimes uh, for breakfast uh, individually in smaller groups. But that having that group of people that you can talk to at your level that understand what you're going through is very important. So the lessons of life, the lessons of leadership apply at every level. But I keep always coming back to courage. If you don't have courage, you can have all the knowledge in the world. You can have all the, the uh, resources in the world. But if you don't have courage, you won't make the right decisions. And that's what we need in this country today is courage. Yeah, you, you mentioned that. It seems like when we watch a lot of things that happen politically mm -hmm. in this country, mm -hmm. so much of, of the sides of both parties – uh, when they're they're on the television shows or the radio shows talking about whether or not to make a certain move, it's so often now done in whether it's good for the party or not, or whether that strategically is going to work, or whether it will do more harm than good in the yeah. in the long term for the party. Whether we'll get blamed and mm -hmm. how people are perceive it, but you just don't anymore hear anybody say, "Well, we're doing it because it's the right thing to do." Right. In fact, I was just appalled about two years ago. I heard a, some, one of the uh, media commentators say, you know, if he doesn't change his position on this, he will never be elected. As though he, he should just change his position yeah. so he can get elected, which uh, made no sense whatsoever. People should be elected because they have a position that they really believe in. They have a vision that they believe in, and they should be so convicted of it that they're willing to stick with it and try to convince others that that's the right vision. Well, and the thing that worries me is that it is so commonplace to not think of doing the right thing, but in think of, or instead think of what's politically expedient. Mm -hmm. A lot of the elected officials openly talk about that. I mean, yeah, that they, right. and I think, I know there had to be a time where, when asked, why are you taking this position, if they had said, well, because that's what I need to do, in you know, for political purposes, I mean, they'd never utter those words. They they would be embarrassed or ashamed or feel as if they had been exposed. But now, oftentimes, and we see this within the Republican Party, the two sort of factions there, one side, and their argument is we can't do this because, well, you know, it'll hurt us in the next election. Right. I'm thinking, I know there had to be a time when that was something that an elected official would have been ashamed to say. Right. Now exactly it's open right. strategy. It, I mean, it is. It, it is open strategy to spin and uh, help, try to get people to believe something that you don't really believe yourself. So that is, a, to me, is a real danger to this country. We see it in the media. We see it on both parties. It's just become an accepted thing, and that's where I think the courage has to come in. You have to have the courage of your convictions, and I know it's not easy. I know from personal experience it's not easy, uh, whether it's facing uh, an interrogator who's going to torture you or facing just a decision in your business because I – run a business. So, you know, you have to believe that in the long run, you'll come out better doing the right thing, what you know is right, and what you believe in your heart is right, doing that, rather than trying to talk yourself around it. Yeah, and I don't know if this you share this belief or not, but I, you know, for me, because people say, well, in the end, it always works out. And I think it depends on where you think the end is. Yeah. You know, for me, People who think that here on earth it's always going to work, that's, if you bank on that, right. you're going to find yourself very disillusioned oftentimes. Yeah. Um, and it may not here on earth, but in the end, in my, you know, for me and in my mind, that, that's when it's all going to work out. But I think sometimes people think, well, you know, that what goes around comes around here on earth and, and the truth always prevails here on earth. No, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't right. necessarily always. You know, it's, it's interesting you bring that up. Uh, the other theme that I have, and I'm working on a short book now on accountability, uh, but without truth, we cannot continue to have freedom because without truth, uh, it, truth is 
the foundation for freedom. It's the foundation for trust. If you don't, and, and more and more as I see us drift, drifting further from real truth, the greater I think we are at risk of becoming a banana republic. Mm. Yeah, uh, I agree. And I think the key word is foundation, because I think mm-hmm. if you don't have it, you don't have any foundation. Right. The, the foundation is simply created by whomever happens to be in charge at the time. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's you know, and, in my speaking, uh, occasionally, not very often, but occasionally, and I know it's going through somebody's mind in the audience every time, but someone will say, uh, well, you know, but truth uh, for you and truth for me might be, might be different. And I say, yeah, maybe about whether coffee's good with or without mm-hmm. sugar. But the reality, the reality is 99.9% of the issues we face, we know what mm-hmm. the right thing to do is. We've been taught by our family. We've been taught at church, at school. We have local, state, federal laws. We have professional ethics. We know what the right thing to do. We have the golden rule that exists in all seven of the major religions mm-hmm. of the world. So we know what the right thing yeah. to do is. We just rationalize ourselves mm-hmm. around. Yeah, or, or try to work backwards, you yeah. know, from our decision. and How can I justify, justify yeah. this as being yeah. something that's the right thing? Uh, well, Colonel Lee Ellis, it, it's a pleasure. It's nice to meet you. Thank and you. Uh, so are you at the College of the Ozarks again? Is that what you're... Uh, that was last night. Oh, that was la- that's right. We, we, that's had, right. A, we had a Nick teach-in uh, on the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. We had a teach-in down oh. there last night. Uh, no kidding. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you. You're welcome anytime. Thank uh, you, I really appreciate you coming by and the message that you, that you, you send. And I uh, and, uh, hope you have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you, Nick. All right, Colonel Lee Ellis. I'm Nick Reed. And-